This time on Pedalbox, we're picking up from episode 94 and we're finishing up the work we started in the front inner wing by fitting some sheet metal behind the rear wheels and I'm going to build this framework for the rear clamshell of the car. This is going to be the engine cover that will go over the top and really finish off the side profile nicely. As you can see, it's turned out pretty well. Last time on the kit car we got these panels welded in and we started working forwards along the bodywork and Chris welded in this brace across the top of here and these little tabs so that we can start fitting up the inner panel. Now the first one that's going to go on the back, it's probably going to get hit with a lot of water, a lot of rocks coming up off the tyres, so we're going to make this out of aluminium the same as we did on the back. Now the aluminium we're going to use is exactly the same, it's this one millimetre sheet. And you'll notice that this one has a funny shaped piece cut out of it already and with good reason because I've already chopped one piece out to make sure that I was going to be able to get two from this piece of aluminium and I wasn't going to have to go out and buy another sheet in order to make these two pieces. So I call that a win. So this funny shape is the basic layout of the inner panel. This edge across here matches up with the edge of the side of the car and it fits in like that. Obviously we've got the bolt holes that we can put in down here across the middle and then one right in the center where we put, uh, if I can get this out of the way, this little flange in in order to bolt the front edge on and then to add another piece that will go along the front inside where all of the suspension is. But this is a nice flat plane that we can work with in order to make the, uh, the metal shaping as simple as possible. So this piece in you can see roughly where we still need to do some work. Obviously it's a little bit too tall but that's because we haven't shaped the top of the arch and this needs to come all the way up to that point in order to work properly so we can leave that for the time being. This corner is obviously already cut almost exactly to the angle that we need, it's marked out for the top there so that's all good but the inside edge needs some proper work doing. We need to shape this to be exactly the right uh, dimension to match up into this corner and then this should sweep back across and we can bend it all up and pin it to where it needs to be on the inside of the arch. And once it's on this side, we can do the other side. So after a bunch of what's best described as exploratory surgery, chopping this corner out, we now have a panel that fits nicely into the gap. When I can get it around the suspension. So this piece at the top that's overhang is just going to be left as is because we can take this out when we do the arch and we can shape this to fit exactly what metal we put down. And the same goes for this inner piece here. It's not actually in the way of anything and we might be putting a brace across so that we've got something to mount a bonnet catch to either in this corner or down here. One way or the other we might as well leave that in for the time being. So with this basically fit, I'm going to draw it out onto the other piece of aluminium and then I'm going to start attaching this onto the chassis, drilling the holes into the brackets on the back, fitting the riv nuts and then we can start pinning this properly in place and really fine tuning the fit down in this inner corner. And one mistake I have made is not left quite enough on this end for a return flap that will come around and attach onto this panel. It's not really a problem because we can still use this little brace that we installed to attach the uh, inner fender that goes, or the inner, um, inner arch rather, that goes across the back of all of the suspension components. But it does mean I'm going to have to weld on another piece to go down for this to attach to, which is less than ideal but far from a showstopper. Well, 
the panel's all in and I've put the extra two rivnuts in on the inside. I added a little extension onto that L bracket right on the inside corner so that we've now got enough material to come all the way around and attach the two panels onto something quite strong rather than having to recut these where they were a little bit too small. So, go me. I've also mirrored that onto the other side, so the other side is all done as well, it's all bolted in, same as this one. We can now move on to something a little bit more fun at the back of the car. So the next big job to do at the back of the car is fill in this void here. This is where the engine cover needs to go and we need to either hinge this or pin it down one way or another. But before we can get too far into that, we need to build the framework so we know what shape it's going to be and how it's going to operate when it either opens or lifts off. The cover itself is going to be covered in aluminium sheet, exactly the same stuff we used for the exhaust cover, the inner arches. It's just one millimeter aluminium sheet, and we can get that in a two meter by one meter uh, sheet that we can use to span this gap. And that's really defined how big this opening could be, because from here around across to the same point on the other side is more than a meter, so we have to reduce one of the other dimensions to under a meter, which we have done with, uh, with this one between these two points. So to build the frame, we need something that's going to drop into these drip, ch uh, drip channels that we put in quite some time ago and come far enough across that we'll touch onto the uh, wings at both sides at the back. So instead of using basic L channel, which only comes in three millimeter thickness, which is a little bit heavy duty, I've chopped down some inch by inch box section into some L channel. Now, this one's been cut down uh, from an old piece that we cut off, I think, from the back of the car somewhere, because we painted this black at some point or other. So this is definitely a recycled piece. And this one will go along this section here. Now we've had to use inch by inch because we need enough distance across in order to give us that edge where you won't be able to see underneath. And we're going to chop this down because the half inch is, uh, or we only have just over half an inch of room across the bottom here. So this needs to be recessed in down that side. And then once we have those two joined, we can put the mid pieces in and frame it up. I've already made the first two of these. You can see there are a couple of slices that I've taken out, which is just given the little bend that goes around on that side. And this one goes up here. So we can get these two welded together and make sure that they fit in nicely and then replicate it on the other side to get the next ones in and build the basic framework up out of those six pieces. And here is the nearly completed frame for the engine cover. So this is going to give us the side profile of exactly what the back of the car is going to look like. And I really, really like it. There's a couple of bits that we do need to address, though, at the top, because there's a dip under here where the um, sheet metal around the roof scoop kind of dipped in a little bit, it does go away. So whilst it's really nice and tight over this side, I can basically get my fingers in underneath the lip there, but it does bend down. So we'll probably just put a little, couple of little cuts in there and press that down so it'll fit in a little bit nicer. Across the back, similar problem, but much, much less severe than the one up here. Now there's this big brace that runs across the side and we have checked what the level is regarding the edge up here. And it might run through depending on how long we put the window in here, but ultimately the middle of this really needs to be quite, uh, quite strong. So it's gonna have to go in. Now you'll also notice that there is a cross beam through the middle and that was because these side pieces really wanted to flex inward. So it needed some kind of brace. I've tried to put it as low down as I possibly can. Um, I could feasibly move it a little bit lower, but I wanna try and put it here cause it's quite um, central. It's, it's probably about 
60-ish percent of the way down, 40 up. So where it's wider here, it should give a good deal of strength. It's also roughly in line with the bottom edge of the window. So whatever window we put in, by the time we get the, um, like the, the rubber trim that will hold the window in, it should lift it up so it'll be across the top. So you probably will still have some of this in, but I don't think at any point we were expecting to have a window that covered all of this area here. I think it's also going to need some bracing across this section just to hold the, the, the panel where it's going to try and flap around a lot. So it's going to have some bracing in roughly a third of the way in from each side, which is approximately where these cuts are, up to the midpoint here and across to this section. And then we can bond the aluminium to those as well and hopefully stop it flapping even more, which would be really, really good. The smaller panel up here is probably going to need something, but again, I'll wait until we've got the window view through and then we can put something down across the inside edge here, leaving as much space as possible in the back to actually be able to look through without completely obscuring it. The other option is we go and leave a gap across here, put another bar in and then brace down, but I'm not entirely sure about which way that's going to work. I think I'd much rather have a taller window up at this end rather than a lower window this way and move this down and have a brace at the top. So we'll see what's going to work best once we put the seats back in, put a mirror roughly in the right place and then have a look through the back of the car. But for the time being, this is done. And what's even better is it's really nice and strong. I took another look at the angle coming out from the rear window and I've decided that this is a much better location for this to come down into. It's still 90 degrees off where the brace is, but instead of it being the very inside corner, it's now on the very top apex of the rear wing and it comes up at 90 degrees uh, from the, the rake uh, off the back window um, and then braces across there. And the reason that I did that was when I was measuring before and I put it up here and it looked like it was level, the car is actually still on a rake where I've got the front end lifted up. So it was actually tipping that way. So you'd have a much higher window than you really want. So I've lowered this down and now it's much flat, even a little bit dropped. So this will be a much better location for it. And it's still nicely triangulated along the side. It does still need a few more braces putting in off the sort of third way in from here into the centre and then across that way but that will be uh, quite easy to put in once we've measured up for the um, clamshell, the actual panel that's going to go over the top of this. Similarly I'm probably going to brace off these two points and these two points and the same at the top just to give it lots and lots of rigidity to stop it um, flexing side to side. If I lift it up, if I lift it up and still leave it hooked in at the very top of the car, it's actually surprisingly difficult. It does still have a little bit of flex to it. So taking those bits out will be really, really advantageous. There we go, it's sat back in nicely again. It does locate really neatly now that I've cleaned up all of these corners so there's no overhangs and it fits nicely down into the channel. So we'll be able to get some little rubber strips along the edge of here and along the back and that will seal up really nicely once the whole thing is covered. So that'll be happening on a future episode of Pedalbox. If you'd like to support us, you can check out shop.pedalbox.show. We've got t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, beanies, all sorts of stuff. You can buy them and we'll get them shipped out to you as soon as possible. And if you want to support us a little bit more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. We've got lots and lots of people viewing but not subscribing. And it really helps us if you like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.